everyone, and welcome back to Mandalay Bay. It's theCUBE live at Click World 2023 in fabulous but windy Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here all day with Dave Vellante, unpacking everything that's going on at Click. We just came in from the keynote. We've got two great guests who are going to be talking about the impact of the talent acquisition for customers. You won't want to miss this. Please welcome Drew Clark, one of our alumni back, the Chief Strategy Officer at Click. Jamie Kaiser joins us as well, the COO of Talent. Guys, great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so glad to be here. Happy to be here. Great to see 2,000 or so folks here, Drew. First Click World since 2019. You are a Click veteran, if you will. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, from your strategic vision perspective, everyone's very excited about the talent acquisition. I want to get your perspective on where it sits in your strategic vision. Bring out that crystal ball and then uh, Jamie will go to you. All sure. right, well with the crystal ball you got to go back a little bit. Uh, so we're 30 years old and 30 years ago we started working with our first customers to be able to kind of bring human intelligence, data analytics, and ultimately getting to an outcome. That was done on a simple kind of a departmental deployment with Tetra Pak, our very first customer. That vision is still true today, but at an enterprise scale. And so now we have 38,000 customers around the world, and one of the themes that continues to come on is how do we actually help the human beings work with data, analytics to generate kind of positive outcomes, and this is where kind of our acquisitions have been and will continue to kind of support. We are singularly focused on that. It's one of the things we learned in the pandemic, Jamie, is access to real-time data is no longer nice to have, it's table stakes for organizations in any industry to be successful. We, you know, in our consumer lives, we expect we can get anything we want. 24-7, doesn't matter where we are in the world, we're going to be connected. Talk a little bit about what's going on at Talend, your vision as COO for this unity that is impending. Yeah, thank you. So first let me take it back a little bit, just tell you a little bit about Talend. I know not everyone tuning in is, is familiar. So Talend, not quite as old as Click. we're about a almost 20 year old company. French roots, we were French founded, so strong European heritage. We've got almost 1,300 employees and um, you know, really have just you know grown to a scale. We're very excited about about the acquisition. The last few months for us, from a vision perspective, um, you know, we have we think every day and talk to customers every day about that point you made. It's no longer a nice to have. The minute the data shows up, it's old, it's stale. And so our engineering efforts, our strategic efforts, have really been about how do we help customers to build those pipelines to put data in this in you know from source systems to targets in a way that is real time, that is constant, that is accurate. And a big thing for us from a vision perspective is about this notion of the trust score, right? How do we ensure that data is trustworthy so that when a business user is using it to make decisions or needs insights, they know it's right, they know it's accurate. So trust is the oil, sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to comment, <laughs> trust is, is oil. It, it's it's yeah. absolutely essential. Organizations need to work with companies like Talent and, and Click so that they can ensure that what they have is high quality, but it's, it's all about trust. Yeah. Basically, just want to make that comment. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting, Drew and Jamie. The Cube's first big data show was 2010. We did Hadoop World, and it was just sort of, yeah. you know, this organic meetup was very cool. And then we, we just embedded ourselves into the big data community, and Click, Attunity, and Talon were always right there. They were, all three companies were big supporters of the Cube, and it's really interesting to see how this world is coming together. We were talking to Mike Capone about you know, platforms, right? Not just these bespoke tools, and I know, you know Gartner Magic Quadrants have to go in deep to each of these different areas, but when, yeah. my question, Drew, is when, when you think about M&A, obviously it's going to be customer driven, but how do you make decisions around, what are you looking for in an acquisition? What, what, what's a target acquisition look like, and how is that decision made to actually yeah. go forward? Well, when we do M&A at the company, uh, there are four things that we look for. First, there's, it's got to be aligned to the vision, what we just talked about. And uh, the second thing is the technology fit. And we get that kind of indication of technology fit from joint customers, how they're using the platform and to be able to work with it. The third is about culture. This is super important for every acquisition that we've done. We've actually walked away from deals where culture wasn't right. And this is where we're excited about our Swedish heritage in Europe and Talon's kind of French heritage and kind of as we think about a global kind of technology company coming together. And the fourth area is financial. Now a lot of people that get spent up all their time on, okay, how much did the you know, acquisition cost? How do you work with that? But if we don't have the first three, 
doesn't really matter about the financial side. And so all of our acquisitions have met those criteria. And then we go through three stages of integration. And this is where we realize the value of technology fit and then cultural fit. So the three stages, you run and work independently. You kind of still continue to do your jobs for the customers. Second stage, integrate. And this is where you start bringing the tools together. And then the last stage is scale. So we bought a company called uh, Big Squid uh, two years ago uh, that's now Click AutoML. Two out of three customers in our cloud are using it right now and you know, they have generated over 500,000 predictions on data models in our cloud. That's the scale, they're at that scale portion of the phase. With talent, we're going to go through the same kind of integration kind of phases as soon as we get through regulatory approval. How, how would you describe the talent culture, Jamie, and why do you think it's a good fit with Click? Yeah, you know, the, the little bit of time I've been able to spend with Click folks, one of the things they, many have said to me is, it's like a family, and what they mean by it is having each other's back, lining up around common mission and goals, and you know, really wanting to work in the spirit of the customer, and I see a lot of those parallels at Talent. The deep roots and the passion for what we do, we have a lot of amazing technologists and people who are just data geeks, right? They've done this for a long time, they love what they do, they're incredibly passionate about building tools and data management solutions for customers, and I think that's going to be so complimentary to Click when, we, when we're able to come together. So uh, we, oh, go ahead. I, I think she just called me a data geek, but you know, just. <laughs> that's a cool thing though. That's, that's, that's a cool thing, okay. yeah. That's a term I'll, of take that it I'll take yes. that as a compliment. I agree, <laughs> I agree. And I am, I You should put that on, on LinkedIn, yeah. on your profile. Yeah. Okay. But talk a little bit about, Jamie, about some of those, you know, it's not just about the features and the functionalities and the capabilities, it's the scale. You talked about the scale and what, what, what Click is delivering. Jamie, talk to us from Talon's perspective and then, and then Drew maybe chime in, what scale can we expect this yeah. acquisition to deliver and what's the, what are some of the outcomes that those customers are going to be able to realize? Yeah, so one of the really cool things for me when I, when I came to Talent was realizing I was in a business where every single industry, every customer around the world needs Talent. It's data, right? Everybody is using data and so one of the great things about scale that Drew and I talk about is starting lower market, down market, we have Stitch. We have a product from a company we acquired in 2018 Stitch is a, an entirely um, managed cloud ETL solution. What's great about that? Some customers don't have big IT shops. They don't have time for a big project. They want to get data moving quickly. They can use Stitch. And then, from a scale perspective, as their business changes, as things grow, they've got talent and eventually, right, the power of click to come together and we'll be able to grow with them. And then from a talent perspective, because we're agnostic, we can serve customers on prem in hybrid workloads, cloud environments. Um, we've made a big push to the cloud over the last couple of years and, and have really invested in our cloud technologies. And so I think from that scale perspective, we meet customers where they are and it's, it's really great to be there. Speaking of being agnostic, I was just looking at some, some information from Click over the last few days, talking about being agnostic. You know, Click said, we, same thing, we want to meet customers on the cloud of their choice. How is this power couple going to enable customers to do that so that they're really in the driver's seat. Yeah, uh, so from our perspective, we work with customers wherever they are. You know, if they're on kind of private clouds, they're on their own, you know, data centers to Google, to Azure, AWS, and you know, as we work with them, what we're finding is that it's always an and. It's never, you know, all in on one. You know, it's a, this platform and this platform. And when you bring in data integration and you're working with a control plane that allows the data to kind of stay where it needs to for, uh, you know, GDPR kind of compliance on a regulatory, but also just the right information to the right place at the right time. And this is where the hybrid really kind of comes in. And we're committed to that. I think that's where that technology fit kind of came in when we looked at how we operate from the delivery to the understanding and to the execution of that kind of data. We have to work with it. Yeah, no, I think you said it, it, it really well. It's, yeah. um, it's not going to limit us in terms of when customers change decisions. We've got a big focus on cloud transformation and cloud strategy and we found Click's you know, got a similar journey as well, so bringing those things together in terms of helping customers move from where they are to where they want to go is, is going to be great for both companies. Can I ask you a question about Stitch? I think a Stitch is like a, a, a capability to let me take data and put it into a data warehouse from different sources and I think of 
opportunity, Replicate as doing something similar. Can you help us sort of yeah. understand the difference between those two? Yeah, uh, fundamentally it's about the sources. Uh, so Stitch is a cloud SaaS source data loader. You got it right. You know, it's like, all right, I've got these uh, 144 cloud 144 data sources. 144 plus, Stitch right? API, yep. And you know, and that's getting it into kind of the repository that you need. Replicate, uh, and what we loved about the acquisition of Attunity and their flagship product, Replicate, it is a log-based kind of change data capture, really on client manager, on premises data sources. So as information changes in an SAP system, somebody's ordering and buying something at a point of sale, I just want to move that one piece of data up to where it needs to. I don't need to move the whole thing. And so change data capture, Replicate, is about taking that at scale and so we have customers who are replicating data from you know, 27 SAP systems. Uh, one of our customers on stage today talked about you know, 650 kind of data sources moving on that. You add in the cloud from Stitch, and now you bring in the trust and the data quality uh, capabilities of talent. I have confidence in the data. It is really about kind of back to that vision of combining human intelligence with data analytics for outcomes, uh, but with today's modern architecture. Speaking of outcomes, Jamie, share with us a customer example, a joint customer example, that you think really speaks to the value proposition of what Talon delivers with Click. Yeah, so Lenovo comes to mind. Lenovo, is, as you know, is a PC computer hardware company, and Lenovo has uh, both Talon and Click, and, and they use Talon for an e-commerce hub that they have, but they made a change in wanting to be able to bring in um, an understanding of customer needs. They felt like they had a thriving e-commerce hub, but it was missing that component of how do we figure out that next best action? And so they started with implementing uh, predictive analytics, but the executives were finding it wasn't giving them the, the information they needed, it wasn't, it wasn't fitting the need. And so they wanted to move to prescriptive analytics and, and did so by um, taking a model that then said, I've got, you know, I think 60 summaries of user data, scraping sites like Amazon and pulling in that information. So now by using that analytics and bringing that into the e-commerce hub, they found that their sales have increased, they've improved customer lifetime value, they reported hitting their target of $4 billion in sales and on track to hit $8 billion by 2026. And so they see those metrics really tell the story. Massive business changing metrics. Yeah. It's not just we're faster, we can see more. It's right. revenue, it's customer experience, because it's all about the customer experience, right? We have this expectation that we can get anything we want, yeah. wherever we are, it has to work. What, whatever the company is, if my grocery store, if it's a car dealer, if it's, it's e-commerce, I, I need to be able to have, and I want that next best action to be right. relevant. That's right. We could talk days about that. Yeah. And there's <laughs> your answer on scale. When you talk about the outcomes yeah. at that scale with what Lenovo is doing. It's not just technology scale, but it's business outcome scale. And that's so important. So, so I presume you're not done, right? Oh I mean, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You looking out there, what's, what's the private markets like today? I mean, you know, the money was cheap, so there was a pretty, pretty good balance sheet situation out there, although, when you look in, a lot of companies are now have you know, 12 months or less, and, and so I guess my question is, how are you thinking about M&A versus organic investment? I'm not trying to take you out of a job, but, but, <laughs> but as you, I mean, you've done a lot of acquisitions. Are you done? What's the balance look like? Are you turning the yeah. knob, knob back? Well, so if you go back to 2016, we've done 10 acquisitions. Including and Talon, right? No, Talon's 11. That'll be so, 11. Yeah, number 11, okay. uh, so, and we're not done yet, so okay. we're on that side. We've been very deliberate. You know, I talked about the, uh, you know, the criteria we use and then the integration yeah. kind of methodology. There are other companies out there who are just buying anybody who's up for sale. We are actually deliberate in going out and finding the right companies, and, uh, and everybody that has been part of the Click family uh, we've kind of approached ourselves and kind of brought in on that. We'll continue to do that. We actually took some time uh, during the real, kind of uh, to talk about money is cheap, valuation expectations got really kind of crazy. We're you know, financially prudent. Uh, and we, so we didn't buy any companies for the last year uh, because we wanted to actually be thoughtful you know, it's a balance about revenue growth and profit that allows you to actually say, here's how we continue to invest organically and inorganically for a long time going forward. And so we will continue, but 
NFL draft's coming up soon. I understand it's not a great year for quarterbacks in the NFL. <laughs> How, how's the draft looking for data companies? You know, because you're, you're pretty uh, picky, but maybe it's. Uh, you know, there's a couple out there, you know, in that we'll continue to con you know, engage and work with. And we're doing the same thing, looking at technology fit, joint customers, uh, looking at cultural fit, how do the teams kind of interoperate and work together. And then, of course, price uh, comes into that kind of piece. And like any, uh, any sales deals, you have lots of kind of activity, uh, but on, when all four are right, vision, tech, culture, and finance, you'll see a new news uh, from us. Kind of interesting how the private equity world has changed over the last decade plus, you know? It used to be just squeeze as much money as you can out, out and just throw the carcass away. And I think the, the PE companies have just gotten so smart yeah. and realized, wow, if we're just a little bit patient, make some yeah. investments, we could do like amazing things. Yeah, uh, we've been thrilled our with investors. our ownership with Tomo Bravo, uh, you know, because they've company. been a great kind of partner yeah. for exactly that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Do you talk a little bit about one of the things that Mike shared on stage this morning was the slide that showed the executive advisory customers. Where are they in terms of, of the vision of the strategic, the organic versus the M&A? How influential are some of those customers in what you do? Oh, hugely, uh, hugely. Uh, and it just even this morning, I was having breakfast with a number of the people on that slide, and we were talking about kind of where are they going in the long term? You know, meaning two years, three years. You know, as we talk about the role of AI, generative AI, and how you take operational data and analytics and kind of interoperate in a company, and what are the best pieces to be able to work today and together with that foundation in the future. I'm having those conversations uh, individually, collectively as an organization, and this is where it does feed into kind of our M&A strategy. One of the things, uh, one of our, uh, the chief data officer of one of those kind of advisory uh, councils is saying, what I like about what Click has been doing and as a partner is, you're making it easier for us to know that these solutions are interoperable and will work in our landscape. It's making it simpler but I'm not beholden to just one kind of company. So I know the top products will work better together. It's up to you to make that work, meaning us, you know, yep. working together. Yep. And uh, then that sets the foundation for them to do new things. And I had a customer yesterday stop me in the halls and he said, uh, during the, uh, the recent banking crisis, because we navigated that, there are uh, a, a commercial bank, we navigated that flawlessly because we have the data, the analytics today, using kind of click, you know, I'm here to learn more about what are the other tools, because you know, you've helped us stay out of trouble with the credit, and you know, we're going kind of bigger, and uh, Did they know, hedge? Jo Jonathan, Jonathan, to, you know, if you're watching right now, I think he's in a session, yeah. but he stopped me in a hall, it was just so inspiring Absolutely. to hear from that, yeah. Well, that's, it's transformative. Yeah. So exciting stuff, guys. We thank you so much for joining us on the program, talking about talent and click, better together. We're excited to yeah, see excited. what happens over the next quarter. We'll have to have you back as we talk about more joint impact. Oh. We'd love to. All right, Absolutely. guys. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank Great you so stuff. much. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE live from ClickWorld 23. Stick around, I got a great panel on data for good climate change coming up next.